Hello everybody, my name is Jonathan Parker, your instructor. The reason I'm making this video is, is just kind of as a catch-all. Uh, things in higher ed never tend to be settled until after the first day of classes, so I don't know how many of you are going to uh, come to me, you know, in the second or third class period or drop and you know, I have a roster right now, but the roster might completely change. It, it's happened before. So um, instead of giving the syllabus lecture uh, a million times, I just figure if I have any new students, I'd point them to Canvas right here where I plan on posting uh, this video and say, go listen to it. Uh, because, well, it's boring, the syllabus uh, is important because it is really the course contract. So let's open it up. So this is um, my favorite class to teach. Well, anywhere. I was going to say at ICC, but anywhere, really. Uh, I was hired for international relations way back in 2018. And that's still fun. I still have fun with that. But uh, this has really become my favorite. I uh, enjoy um, walking you through. Let me rephrase that. Um, the people who take the international relations course tend to know more about international relations than what's at an introductory level. And while that's fine, that's exciting for me, uh, I feel like in a comparative politics class, at least that I've been running for a while now. We're all learning together and we're all growing together and that that's what you want as a teacher. All right, so uh, my email, Jonathan period Parker at icc.edu. This is the first problem uh, that we run into because emails get sent to J-O-H-N, uh, J-O-N-A-T-H-O-N, all sorts of variations. When I was born way back in 1776, this was the correct way to spell Jonathan. This was the standard spelling. My name is spelled correctly there. There. Um, if we go home on the course page, here I have a sneaking suspicion it's spelled correctly on e-services, e -services, so please uh, don't get mad at me if <laughs> <laughs> you send an email to somebody uh, who is not this person, and I don't respond. I, I can't respond to emails I don't receive. All right. So my office is in uh, 216C uh, with other faculty. I, I just had one other person sharing with me, and I never saw him last semester. So I wonder if that will be the case again. If you need help, please do not hesitate to stop by. Stop by. Please stop by. I am not a mind reader. I won't know if you're having trouble unless you tell me. All right. I've lost students because they said, I've been so confused. Well, why didn't you come see me? Uh, I don't know. So just come by. Uh, Tuesday and Thursday, 115 to 245. I'm in the office. If I have to leave for any reason, there's a note on the door. I'll tell you when I'll be back. It's the easiest thing in the world to get a hold of me. You can get a hold of me in the office. You can get a hold of me via email. If you can spell my name correctly, um, I'll even do Zoom if you want. If uh, we can find a time that uh, fits in both our schedules, I will certainly do Zoom with you. All right, just reach out if you need help. I can't, I can't help you. I, I don't know if something's wrong unless you say something. Really, this sounds obvious, but this is such a problem um, that I need to I need to harp on it a bit. So I'm available by email otherwise and will endeavor to get back to you within one business day. And I say endeavor as I'll just lay it out on the table. I'm I'm going to be respectful of your guys' time. I want you to be respectful of mine. I'm working my way through grad school. I've got a two-year-old. I have other jobs that I do. I occasionally like to remind my wife what I look like and go home, you know, for dinner. If 
an email does not get answered within 24 hours. It's it's going to be answered. Just you know, don't don't bite my head off. Uh, so an email sent on Monday will be answered by Tuesday. An email sent on Friday, on the other hand, will be answered by Monday at the latest. Saturday and Sunday are not business days. I have an online American government class. Uh, a lot of their stuff is due Sunday at 11.59. So if you send me an email over a weekend, you might get an answer. All right, I won't insult you. You can read the course description by yourself. You can read the course level outcomes. Uh, there are two books for this class. I understand, uh, believe me, I understand being a grad student right now myself, uh, the price of textbooks and the overwhelming you know, cost of, of everything in an education. Uh, I will say I don't, I believe it's, this one but whatever the smaller book is because there's a big book that has all the case studies in it and a smaller book um, and I wish I had them in front of me but I'm not in my house right now uh, the smaller book is the one that you really need really absolutely we'll use both but if you can't um, afford both or if for whatever reason the the smaller one is the one you should use your funds on first. And you might be able to find these through Amazon, through any of the third-party vendor sites or whatever, but the smaller one, if you have to make a choice, it, it, the smaller one is the one you need. Uh, so handouts, I'll give those to you. You don't need to spend any money on those. I'll give them to you. All right, course policies. Again, if you need to get a hold of me outside of class or my office hours, utilize the email address listed at the top of page one of the syllabus. Please spell my name correctly. I'll try to respond to all emails within a 24-hour period. Uh, assignment submissions, unless otherwise specified, I will not accept any electronic forms of anything. I'm, I'm old school that way. you got to print it out, bring it in. I'm going to mark it up with my red pen or whatever color I have that day and hand it back to you. Everything you hand in must be a hard copy that you print out and bring to class. If you're sick, email me to let me know that you are ill uh, when you're able and bring a hard copy of the work next time you come. That, that's no big deal. There should never be an instance where you are emailing me anything. We tried that when the pandemic first hit lost a bunch of emails everybody got mad i swore to myself never again all right i've gotten emails in the past stating something to the effect of i can't come to class because i need to study for a test i have later i'll turn in my work next class that is extremely disrespectful and you're not going to be turning anything in if i receive an email from you like that make up a better story learn how to lie better all right, this is actually an email I got. Uh, academic citation etiquette. Whenever you turn in a written assignment, you are required to cite your source. If you use a direct quote from a book, article, website, etc., uh, you paraphrase a chunk of text from a book, article, website, you present a theory, argument, opinion that doesn't belong to you. It is okay. It is okay. It is, in fact, appreciated to acknowledge other people's ideas, theories, or arguments. Uh, it takes time for all of us to develop our own original ideas. Grad school, I'm getting a degree, a, well, not a degree, a graduate certificate in history, because I'll be teaching history at ICC in the spring. Um, have I reached a point where I can develop a thesis uh, about uh, Stonewall Jackson's role in the Civil War yet? Uh, no, probably not. I probably need to read a book or a journal article or borrow somebody's idea. That's fine. You know, we all do that. Uh, from professors all the way down to high school students. Just acknowledge where you're getting the idea from. So at the end of your written assignments, you are required to provide a list of sources that you've utilized. Uh, we will use the latest version of MLA for the bibliographies and inline citations for this class. Use the template and the following link to construct your bio bibliography. Uh, you don't have to use this. 
uh, it, I, I realize that there are a million citation generators. I was just trying to make it easy for you. Uh, take the thinking out of it. You know, it's just create citation and you just run through it. You got to run, run, you have to watch an ad now, but uh, it works. So inline citations are also expected in any writing assignment that you turn in where you have used outside sources. If you have any doubts about whether something needs to be cited, please just create a citation for it. Please don't take chances with your grade. Wikipedia is not an academic resource. Wikipedia is not an academic resource. Wikipedia is not an academic resource. Don't cite Wikipedia in any work that you do this semester. It will negatively impact your grade. How will it negatively impact my grade, Mr. Parker? Well, my answer is follows, as follows. Do you really want to find out? Just don't do it. Don't use Wikipedia. All right. Academic misconduct, plagiarism. Uh, page 24 of the Student Rights and Responsibilities Handbook states the following. Based on the severity of the offense, the instructor may recommend failure for an assignment or failure for the course. Multiple instances of academic misconduct could include sanctions up to dismissal from the college. This has been a, honestly a, an issue every time I've taught a class, not just at ICC, but everywhere. Um, the first time I catch you plagiarizing, I'll give you a zero. Whether it's a, and this is a low point class, so you need to do your homework, you need to take the tests. Uh, so if I have to give you a zero because you plagiarize something, it's going to hurt your grade. I'll give you a zero for whatever assignment you plagiarize without the opportunity to redo it. And this includes the major writing assignments. Uh, the second time I catch you plagiarizing, I'll fail you for the course. I've never had to get this far. No exceptions to this will be made. Now, uh, late submissions. As a rule, I don't accept late work. However, I realize, you know, life happens. Just the standard stuff, illness, death in the family, hospitalization. Um, you know, let me know. We can work something out. But if you come to me with an excuse, like I went to a Chris Brown concert last night, or I had other homework to do, uh, you're not going to be turning anything in. We do the standard 10-point grading scale. I'll let you read point F on your own. Uh, G here, attendance. So... There's a 100-point grade attached to you showing up to class to encourage attendance. And this would be something I would take very seriously because, again, this is a low-point class. And however many points you can rack up, is it's going to be beneficial to you in the long run. So I'm going to have a binder in front of the class uh, with everybody's name listed in it. When you come in, you find your name, you initial uh, next to your name and the date of the class and then you're you're there I have a lot of students uh, am I gonna remember in October if you were there uh, August 22nd no but if I look at the binder then we, yeah so when it comes time for me to determine attendance I'll look at the binder to see when the last time you came to class was and canvas to see what assignments you've turned in you can't miss lectures and not turn in homework uh, and expect to stay in and succeed in the course and this is for never attender and non attender, which the college asks us to, to do, who never showed up to the class and who stopped participating in the class. So 5% uh, of classes missed during the semester constitutes an excessive number of absences and may end up merit being dropped. 5% constitutes approximately a week's worth of classes. And that will be the guideline I use when determining non never attenders. I've had to drop students for excessive absences. I don't want to repeat the practice. Just come to class. All right, take away from the syllabus. Keep an open line of communication with me. You'll be just fine. You'll learn something from the class. You may even enjoy yourself. Crazier things have happened. All right, this is what you all really care about, the grade. So 80% of your grade, um, classwork and homework, at least 150 points. Part of that is uh, these constitution assignments I have you do, that's 77 points in total so again lower point class so please do your homework uh, you'll have two tests depending on how fast or slow we move 
Um, test two could also be the final. Uh, there will certainly be a quiz thrown in there. Attendance is 100 points. So as you can see, what are we, 150, 200, 3, 4, 500 points. Um, maybe more, maybe a little more, but not a not a, not great in terms of, of points up for grabs. So do your homework. And then the final uh, is 20% of your grade. Oh, we, we also do a partner debate in this class sometimes um, if time allows and uh, you all want to do it. So there's that. All right. First day of class. Well, it's Monday, August 21st, but I'll see you the next day. That'll be our first day of class. Labor Day, Monday, September 4th, Thanksgiving break, November 20th to the 26th, and fall semester ends December 15th. I'm, I'm not sure of when the final is. Um, this is all the site says. Fall semester ends December 15th. Normally, it's they have like a final exam window, but we'll figure that out, I'm sure, when the semester starts and really gets going. It is not the responsibility of the instructor to chase you down and make sure you're keeping up with your work. Uh, if you're not turning in stuff, I'm not going to say anything. You're just going to start seeing zeros. So ask a classmate or me what you've missed. If you don't do this, you're going to see a lot of zeros on campus. And uh, we do take home tests and quizzes for most things. I realize the material we cover in class is new to many, if not all of you. I am more interested in you paying attention in class, participating in discussions, than worrying about the next test or quiz. As such, all tests or quizzes given in this class will be take home and will be given at least one week before they are due. I'd rather you listen, pay attention, learn, than be worried about a grade. If you pay attention, if you learn, if you grow, if you learn and know something more than, you know, what you came in with, the grade's going to take care of itself. All right? So this is the course content. Um, I abbreviated it because it was, you know, in the master syllabus I got a long time ago, the United Kingdom, models of government, models of electoral system, and it was like pages and pages long. So this is what we're doing. Um, we can do other countries too, but this is just what's listed in the, the syllabus. So... Here are the country assignments, uh, and you can pick from any one of these nine countries. All right, and you're going to answer these. If you notice, the due dates are right there, and we'll go over this in class, but Freedom House, all you're doing, say, um, what was one of the countries? Say your country is Egypt, all right? We're going to test you a little on geography, but you just click on Egypt, map, you view the report, okay, political rights, civil liberties, you read through it, you answer the questions I want you to answer. Um, the Constitute Project also is at the other site you should need to answer all these questions. So you are going, so let's go down and find Egypt again. CD, we're almost there. Oh, I missed it. All right. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful, etc., etc., you answer the questions. All right. Um, students in the past uh, have not felt that these two sites. I mean, they they have what you need, but that you could that they've been adequately able to answer questions uh, with with just. The two sites there. So if you need, if you want to use outside sources, go right ahead. Just make sure you cite them. So that is it. And make sure uh, the only thing that I have left to tell you is 
if you are, are new, um, if you're a late registrant or whatever it is, make sure you get a syllabus quiz from me the next time you come into class. And that's it. Uh, so I'll see you when I see you.